Following the Second World War, there were a number of executions of high-profile former guards of concentration camps. But there were many more SS members who were not brought to trial, and what shocked the world was that these brutes, many of whom were women and had lived normal lives before the conflict broke out, could be so evil. But the Red Army would liberate the largest Nazi concentration camp, which was known as Auschwitz, on the 27th of January 1945. What they found was a site where over 1 million people would be slaughtered, but despite this there were only 7,000 living prisoners who had been left inside the largest camp. But the crimes of Auschwitz would then be told to the world following the liberation, as prisoners would speak in the trials about their treatment and about the deadly operation of the camp. But what occurred at Auschwitz would establish the Nazis as some of the most evil people to have ever walked the earth, and a number of those guards of the camp were then brought to justice. One of these men was a commandant, Rudolf Hurst, who served as the head of the camp the longest throughout its operation, but he would be given a special death sentence and execution, and he became the final person to be killed inside of Auschwitz. But join us today as we look at the execution of the Commandant of Auschwitz, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Rudolf Hurst would join the Nazi party after he heard one of Hitler's speeches in Munich in 1922, and he would then be involved all in for the Nazis. He would become involved in the death of a schoolteacher who Martin Bormann wanted dead, but then Hurst, who was considered the ringleader of this attack, was tried and was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. He was a feared and violent man, and he was married and would have five children, but he then became obsessed with his close friend Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS. Hurst would join the SS on the 1st of April 1934, and he then joined the Death's Head unit. But he would prefer Himmler to Hitler, and would be more loyal to him. But Hurst then in December 1934, was sent to the first open concentration camp at Dachau, and he served as a block leader. Then he continued to be promoted, and he became a captain, and a close assistant of the Commandant of Sachsenhausen. But at Sachsenhausen he would be known for his leadership of the executioners in the firing squad, and Hurst would execute the first conscientious objector after the outbreak of the Second World War in September 1939. Hurst would fire the deadly shot from his pistol, and he then transferred to become a member of the Waffen SS in 1939, and he was promoted yet again. He then on the 1st of May 1940 began his role as a commandant of a prison camp in western Poland, and the camp was centred around an army barracks, and it became Auschwitz. The site was researched by Hearst himself, and he would command Auschwitz for three years. At this time he transferred Auschwitz to become a huge site and complex, and the camp to begin with was a transition one, for 10,000 prisoners, and they were to be housed inside different buildings. But Hearst would have other ideas, and he would create a huge camp, and he wanted to make the most efficient camp he could, but this efficiency would result in the mass slaughter and executions of hundreds of thousands of people. Hearst moved into a villa in Auschwitz, and he would take with him his wife and children, and he would, despite running a death site, live a normal life at home. He was described by his wife as a family man, but at its height the camp would have three major areas, Auschwitz I, Auschwitz II Birkenau, the main extermination centre, and Auschwitz III Monowitz, the IG Farben factory, which was a slave labour site. Hearst, in June 1941, was given the order by Heinrich Himmler to prepare for the final solution at Auschwitz, and Hearst was told that Auschwitz would become one of the major sites for the mass slaughter of people all across Europe. He would then decide to test different methods of mass killing and extermination, and Auschwitz would be changed in such a way to facilitate the slaughter of people. He would introduce gassings to Auschwitz to kill as many people as quickly as he could, and as a commandant he would oversee the deaths and exterminations of thousands. But following his arrest he said of his time at the camp that, I myself never knew the total number, and I have nothing to help me arrive at an estimate. I can only remember the figures involved in the larger actions, from Upper Silesia and the general government, 250,000, Germany, 100,000, Holland, 95,000, Belgium, 20,000, France, 110,000, Greece, 65,000, Hungary, 400,000, and Slovakia, 90,000. This brings his total deaths to 1.1 million, and Hearst would then say, I can no longer remember the figures for the smaller actions. I regard a total of 2.5 million dead as far too high. Even Auschwitz had its limits to its destructive capabilities. Prisoners were sent to Auschwitz from all across Europe, 
and they would arrive at the site on transport trains, and following this they were then forced to undergo the selection process. Here SS Guards and Hearst himself at times would patrol the railway yards, and inmates deemed fit enough to conduct labour would be admitted into the camp. But those who were considered too weak, old or not fit enough, would then be quickly sent to the gas chambers, where they were told to shower before they were then going to be admitted. But instead of water coming out of the showers, gas would, and then these people were killed within minutes of their arrival. Rudolf Hess would be sacked from Auschwitz in 1943, after it was alleged he had an affair with a prisoner, and he would then come back to the deadly site the year later. This was to oversee Operation Hearse, a deadly objective that carried his name, in which 430,000 Hungarian Jews would be sent to Auschwitz, and they would all be slaughtered in 56 deadly days. There were so many being killed that the crematoriums could not keep up. Rudolf Hearse would then be sent to Ravensbrück, an all-female camp, for a short stint where he organised further gassings before the end of the war came, and he went on the run. He would be arrested in March 1946, and he tried to hide out as a gardener under the name Franz Lang. But his wife, who had been arrested, gave over his identity, and because of this, the British troops arrived to arrest him. The British would batter Hearse with axe handles, and they could have killed him in this, until they were told to stop by their senior officer. But Ernst Kautenbrunner, a senior Nazi, would at the end of the war, during the Nuremberg trials, call Hearst as a defence witness. He would state in the trial that he estimated almost 2.5 million people were killed at Auschwitz when he oversaw the command structure, and he said this represented around 70% of the people sent there. He would later revise his death toll, as he said he was over-predicting, but he would then be handed over to the Polish authorities. Rudolf Hearst was then placed on trial for his horrific crimes against humanity, and whilst in prison he documented his experiences, and he said how he'd been mistreated by the British. During the trial he remained calm, but Hearst knew he would be executed, and following the death sentence being pronounced to him, he stated that he wanted his wedding ring to be sent to his wife. His trial ended on the 2nd of April 1947, but then the former prisoners of Auschwitz would come forward and lobby the judges to allow Rudolf Hearst, the former commandant of Auschwitz, to be hanged on a specially built gallows inside his concentration camp and this was then allowed, as the gallows was then created. But his execution was scheduled for the 14th of April 1947, but it was then delayed, as it was worried that the locals would seize Hearst and would execute him themselves on the way to his execution, but this was then put back two days. The gallows was made with a trap door in it, and Hearst arrived on the 16th of April at 8am, and he was then taken to his former office building. He would have a final cup of coffee, when this was finished, he was taken to the death block of Auschwitz, block 11 for a short period. At 10am he was then led out to his execution, and he walked confidently throughout his former camp, and he then was approached by the executioner and his assistants. The executioner had a black hood, and he then helped Hearst up the stairs, as he had his arms tied behind his back. Following this, Hearst was helped onto a stool, and the noose was then placed around his neck, whilst he was stood on the stool over the trap door. The priest fathers of Remba approached Hearst, who was then stood on the stool as a death sentence was read out. The executioner made final adjustments to the noose, then the hangman kicked out the stool from underneath him, and slowly Rudolf Hearst choked to death. His body hit the trap door when it opened, and then the priest chanted a prayer for the dying. At 10.21 he was pronounced dead, 13 minutes after he'd been hanged. Rudolf Hearst, after his execution was then cremated, and his ashes were scattered in an unknown location. He would admit to his crimes days before his death, and he said, As Commandant of Auschwitz, I was responsible for carrying out part of the cruel plans of the Third Reich for human destruction. But inside of Auschwitz, over one million people would lose their lives, and Hearst would expand the site to a colossal extent, in which it became the most destructive camp of the Second World War. It was horror on earth, as his SS guards would carry out slaughter and execution with their bare hands, encouraged by their boss. Rudolf Hearst would get his justified execution in the very place where he brought such terror to the world. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.